Hi guys. It is a warm summer night. A warm summer night. Back here in paradise, I have found my way back to East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, where I left. Last time I was here, it was 118 degrees, so it's at least cooled off a little more than that on this beautiful summer evening. Tuesday, November 7th, 2017, somewhere along there. So I have been on the road for two days, for two days to get back here, wondering what the hell I'm doing back here. So I haven't really spent much time on the daily news. <coughs> so I wasn't even planning to bring you around. I was just simply putting together my climate change meltdown roundup rant for tomorrow, which I'll be bringing you tomorrow. But as long as I was over on the science pages, on the science pages of Yahoo News here on this Tuesday, I just decided, what the hell, let's just do one of my Tuesday end times headlines of the week. Just what the science pages are starting to look like in late 2017 as we open the pages of the mainstream media and take a walk through the book of Revelation, as my old buddy Al Gore would say. And once again, as if we haven't heard it enough, many stories from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Stephen Hawking, all over the mainstream media today. Let me find my correct old man glasses here. So Newsweek magazine talking about Stephen Hawking, at least finally some good news from Stephen Hawking. It is about time that that guy had some good news for the planet. Stephen Hawking's AI, his artificial intelligence warning, artificial intelligence could destroy civilization. Hallelujah. Thank you, artificial intelligence. World-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking has warned that artificial intelligence, or AI, has the potential to destroy civilization and could be the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity. It is about goddamn time as every other species on this planet cheering on AI being the worst thing that could ever happen to humanity. Um, speaking at a technology conference in Portugal, Hawking said that mankind has to find a way to control computers. There you go. Um, we cannot know if we will be infinitely helped by AI or ignored by it and sidelined or conceivably destroyed by it. Yes. Anyway. Uh, let's see. It could bring disruption to our economy. There you go. Uh, I fear that AI may replace humans altogether. There you go. If people design computer viruses, someone will design AI that improves and replicates itself. This will be a new form of life that outperforms humans. Even if AI does not take over the world, either by destroying or enslaving mankind, Hawking still believes human beings are doomed. Yes, there you go. Quote, we are running out of space on Earth 
and we need to break through the technological limitations preventing us from living elsewhere in the universe. I strongly believe we should start seeking alternative planets for possible habitation. There you go. Of course, Stephen has uh, is on record as saying we have less than 100 years. Humans have less than 100 years. So USA Today taken off with the same story. Uh, how is USA Today the most mainstream of mainstream uh, there you go. Hawking expects AI to transform every parts of our life with the potential to undo damage done to the earth. Uh, exactly. Uh, I cannot think of a better way that artificial intelligence could undo the damage to the earth than by eradicating humans off the earth. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm about to pee in my little eco-Nazi pants. I'm having such an exciting time reading the news. <coughs> now, <coughs> of course, Humans uh, only have 100 years, but now, according to Stephen, Earth itself could become a ball of fire within 600 years. Yes, renowned physicist Stephen Hawking predicts that the world's mounting population will consume enough energy to render the world a ball of fire within 600 years. I don't really know why the same guy who's saying humans are going to be extinct within 100 years say we are going to render the world a ball of fire in 600 years. There you go. Uh, this is all part of Stephen Hawking's push to uh, take humanity to other planets and the stars. My God, the, the, the single worst eco-Nazi nightmare uh, of all of my eco-Nazi nightmares, the number one eco-Nazi nightmare I have is, is that fucktards like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk and all those idiots are going to take this cancer to other planets. Now, of course, uh, there's plenty of space alien wackos saying, Hamba, where the hell do you think we came from? That there's no other way to explain why humans would treat their mother planet the way we do except by the obvious conclusion that Mother Earth is not our mother. Uh, anyway, but we might not have to uh, worry about balls of fire and all that. We might just simply have to worry about, um, about the lights going out. What a U.S. electric grid attack looks like. Modern life has a woven in thread of vulnerability that is peculiar to our times. Electricity. It is the cardiovascular and nervous system of life, of human life, across the world, more so today in the internet age than it was even 30 years ago. If our nation lost electricity, it would cause an instant 
and lethal paralysis that would go beyond inconvenience. There you go. Uh, so what are the alarmist warning us about? What are the alarmist talking about here? Well, if there is no electricity, there is no light, no water, no sewage, no gasoline, no diesel, no heating, no cooling. Even gas and oil systems rely on electric pumps and fans. And if such a blackout were sustained, slow death through starvation or fast death through disease and armed gangs ravaging the cities and towns for food would be the result. In a national blackout, meaning here in the U.S., Canada and Mexico would also be affected and the catastrophe would be complete. There you go. So how will this happen according to the most common uh, scenario from the alarmist? A hostile power would not target a particular city as they might in the past, but instead would detonate a nuclear bomb high in the atmosphere creating an electromagnetic pulse or an EMP which would do the damage. It would cause destructive electric surges, fry electronics, and render most things which support daily life, daily human life in 2017 inoperable. And new urgency comes because some believe North Korea will try an EMP assault against the United States as soon as it perfects its long-range intercontinental missiles. Uh, anyway, guys, this goes on and on about all of these uh, different uh, people who look at shit like this saying this is no fucking joke. Okay. You know, these advice columnists, uh, this is what I guess Dear Abby has morphed into. And the question now is not Dear Abby, it's Dear Joan. And what are concerned readers asking advice columnists Dear Joan about? Should we be worried about missing birds and bugs in our yards. Dear Joan, I have not seen any birds in my garden on my street for weeks. Only a few doves, no smalls, whatever a small is, I call them icks, no robins, and no bugs either. There you go. Uh, what is up? Hmm. So this is what Dear Joan says. Worldwide, there is growing concern over bird populations as many species are showing declines. And a lack of insects can also explain, at least in part, the scarcity of birds and declines in insect populations is suddenly getting a lot of much needed attention. There you go. Uh, 
Some might say it's good news. Fewer flies and mosquitoes to annoy us, but actually it's very bad news. There you go. But we can turn this decline around one yard at a time. We can turn the collapse of insects and birds on the planet around one yard at a time. I don't know what happened to both in my packing frenzy. I hope to hell I, I can't find my no shit Sherlock button or my bullshit detector uh, button. So uh, you're gonna have to decide yourself which button I would be uh, slamming. So which button would Hambone be hitting right now with this article if I ever can okay uh, well I guess there's a third button which I need to get I need to get an applause button uh, it's very rare that, that, that I can use an applause Hallelujah. But this is already the second time. We already have AI destroying civil no, this is the third time we have AI destroying civilization and killing all the humans. We have an EMP attack uh, destroying civilization and killing all the humans. And this is the third time I would be hitting the applause button already. Overlooked infection kills 150,000 babies per year, mostly in Africa. A bacterial infection passed from mothers to babies kills around 150,000 unborn children who should never be born. But has been widely overlooked in developing countries. There you go. Researchers said on Monday as they urge faster progress on developing a vaccine. Uh, does anybody understand uh, Mother Nature bringing out her broom? This is called a system of checks and balances. This is, in this case, a streptococcus bacteria uh, that is keeping 150,000 babies who should never be born from being born. This is bacteria doing their job. And so what are we doing? Uh, the, the mainstream media cheering on a search for a vaccine which will allow another 150,000 uh, little planet nibbling bundles of joy who should never be born uh, to, to be born. But as I was just reading, I was I just reading every Every month in sub-Saharan Africa, with or without this uh, deadly bacteria, three and a half million, three and a half million babies are being born in sub-Saharan Africa every single month. So if they get a vaccine, instead of having 3.5 million babies, we will have... 3.65 million as opposed to 3.5 million. Just to put the number in perspective. Okay, take a wild guess. 
uh, which button I would have in this. I've been doing how many weeks, months, and years have I been uh, talking in my Friday rant about these goddamn hydroelectric dams down there in Brazil, uh, you know, being promoted by the uh, by the United Nations as a clean, green energy source, taking out the Amazon jungle. Well, this article is is going next door to the Amazon jungle, not to the Cerrado at this point, but to the Pantanal, the uh, one of the most important biodiverse wildernesses left on planet Earth that nobody has ever heard of. And we see, no shit, Sherlock, hydroelectric dams threaten Brazil's Pantanal, one of the world's great wetlands. There you go. The Pantanal in uh, South America may not be as famous as the Amazon rainforest, but it in fact has the continent's highest concentration of wildlife. It is more diverse than the Amazon rainforest. There you go. Now, however, the region's endangered plants and animals along with its still undiscovered secrets, may be wiped out, may be, will be wiped out in return for cheap hydroelectricity. The Pantanal is bigger than England. There you go. How many dams? Uh, the Pantanal is now threatened by Brazil's thirst for hydroelectricity. Um, does it say? Anyway, I think there's like, uh, okay, threatening the Pantanal. Uh, over the past few years, Brazil's growth acceleration, Brazil's growth acceleration program has allowed for the increased construction of hydroelectric dams while also removing or weakening some environmental laws. So already, there are already 38 operational hydroelectric plants um, in the river's upper basin that drains into the Pantanal and a further 94 clean green hydroelectric dams are to be built in the coming years. Now this next article, we're going to go from Brazil to China. NPR actually had an excellent article on this. I might need to do an entire uh, rant on this. This is something that nobody's talking about now, but this is going to become a huge story over the next year or two. So uh, if you're not, if, if this story isn't on your radar, I'll let Reuters News uh, has it. China expands crackdown on illegal waste imports. There you go. Uh, earlier this year, China launched a campaign against harmful foreign, foreign garbage as part of Beijing's efforts uh, to improve environmental conditions in China. And so uh, what they're doing is just saying to the United States especially, um, um, it's saying, we don't want your shit anymore. We don't want your goddamn garbage. So as, as NPR is reporting on and this article talks about, so what you have now is all of these 
thousands, probably millions of these goddamn container ships coming over here from China with, with all of this planet-eating plastic crap and all of this goddamn garbage uh, that they send over here. And once we're done with it, I mean, just the packaging itself, and then about, you know, when, this, when the fucking thing breaks in about three weeks. So what we've been doing is just sending the garbage back to China for them to recycle or whatever so they can send it back to us again. But China has said, keep your own damn garbage. So all of these container ships are going back empty. And meanwhile, all of these uh, warehouses in LA, especially, and all over the place are filling up with all of this garbage that China uh, says, Keep your own goddamn garbage. And, and this isn't going to become a big story. Uh, well, I just mentioned uh, a minute ago that my biggest eco-Nazi fear uh, is humans taking this model to other planets. But here, here is one that I have never thought of. E even I. I've never come up with this one, you know. I'm always talking about how these goddamn transgender rights and transgender issues and uh, all of this goddamn gender issues and transgender issues. I think Andy was just ranting about that this week. You know, come on. Well, here we go. A transgender issue that eco Nazis uh, better pay attention to. Transgender women could soon be able to get pregnant and give birth to live babies. Transgender women could soon be able to get pregnant and carry a baby thanks to developments in womb transplants, a leading fertility expert has claimed. Oh my God. Oh my God, I need a my fucking God button. Uh, I touched on this one on Monday. Here's another uh, spin on it from some outfit called Triple Pundit. Appetite for destruction. The environmental toll of livestock production. There you go. A, uh, according to a recent uh, World Wildlife Fund report, uh, that agricultural crop, uh, meaning, uh, meaning soy. They're talking mostly about soy and I think also corn, uh, or am I getting, I'm getting my various rants mixed up, but this one is a World Wildlife Fund report looking at the soybean, the multi-billion dollar soybean industry taking its toll on the, uh, the climate and dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, good God almighty. Uh, Quoting the report, the huge amount of land needed to produce protein-rich feeds such as soy so they can feed it to livestock, uh, everything from chickens right on up, the huge amount of land uh, is having devastating effect, effects on species and their habitats, especially in vulnerable areas such as the Amazon, the Congo Basin, and the Himalayas. Um, 
it estimates more than 30 species have gone extinct across the globe due to the food supply demands of the, Un the United Kingdom alone. Uh, you know, that this shit is overtaking forest, grasslands, and other homes, and then of course the damn pollution I was talking about uh, how these, how all of this cascades. I've had two rants uh, about soy and corn, and then how uh, they're contributing to the single biggest dead zone in uh, the history of the U.S. in the Gulf of Mexico. Good God, guys! I could go out. This is the third time I've had this rant. Uh, this week, I think we get it, but of course I don't get it good enough. Uh, I just had a pork egg roll and a chicken corn dog. Uh, I can assure you that chicken in that processed factory farmed corn dog uh, had something to do with an endangered or an extinct species somewhere and definitely something to do with that dead zone. Anyway, let's just switch gears kind of radically here. Uh, we're going to brush up against the vaxxers, the vaxxer conspiracy wackos, who uh, will not, not only will, not only will they not get their kids vaccinated, these wackos will not get themselves vaccinated. Hmm. And I wonder why several versions of this story, last season's flu shot protected only one in five people. Last season's flu shot protected as few as one in five people receiving it. And this year's could be similarly ineffective, researchers said Monday, calling for a better way to make the vaccine. Hmm. And then next to that, we have this story from Quartz Magazine. Quartz Magazine has re I have a lot of respect for Quartz Magazine. They have recently gone on an absolute attack against the anti-vaxxers that Quartz Magazine has taken it upon themselves to uh, make the anti-vaxxers uh, they sound like the biggest wackos this side of anybody crazy enough to believe that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. And so this latest volley in this attack is we have to rethink what the word educated means in a post-truth world. There you go. It used to be fairly easy to explain what it means to be educated. Hmm. Education involves schooling, and as a general rule, the more schooling you have, the better educated you become. Wow. So, we, so why in the hell uh, would you see the, the, this, this more and more research showing, um, here is a new report from uh, the U.S. and a larger global survey uh, showing that in the U.S. and several advanced European countries, 
It turns out that educated mothers, particularly those with college level degrees, are less likely to vaccinate their children than those with only a high school education. Could it have anything to do with the headline right next to it, last season's flu shot protected only one in five people? Uh, now guys, I'm not going to get off on this. I, I, I have had many uh, of my opinions on vaccines. I'm not going to get off on that rant, uh, but I will make the statement uh, that the last place you're going to find this wacky conspiracy theorist is, is getting a fucking flu shot. And if I had children, Thank God I know, but if I did, I sure as shit would not get them vaccinated. And that's what I would do with my five years of college and my degrees in journalism and my 148 IQ. I wouldn't get my fucking kid anywhere near uh, these goddamn vaccines. And I love this other story next to we need to uh, redefine what it means to be educated uh, in the end times. Many versions of this story on these science pages. Russian man says he lived on Mars in a past life and that Martians are still there. There are lots of crazy people walking around on our planet, and even if they honestly believe some of the things they say, that the Earth is flat, or a mysterious hidden planet is going to slam into the Earth, or the craziest of all, that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. They're not really, they're not really worth listening to. But a 20-year-old Russian man named Boriska Kiprovich may very well be crazy, but his claims that he is a reborn former Martian has stolen headlines thanks to his unusual life story and oddly specific knowledge of the cosmos. <clears throat> All right, moving along. Uh, I'm going to talk about this one more on Monday's rant. I, but I'll just mention the headline from Time Magazine Republicans, led by Donald Trump, uh, Republicans want to allow drilling in the Alaskan National Wildlife, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska, but oil companies might not be interested. There you go. Uh, we'll talk about that, giving these peak oil proponents more ammunition. Uh, okay, now a, a lot of the last stories were my climate change. I'm going to mention the headlines, but uh, before I get into a few climate change headlines, which I'm going to revisit tomorrow, many versions of, of this story on this new research about why we are clueless fucking morons. Um, talking about negative thoughts about 
how humans deal with uh, you know this negativity, all of these negative doom and gloomers talking all of this shit and and this freaking out all these people, uh, these fear pornographer uh, doom and gloomers talking about this crazy shit like overpopulation, in abrupt climate change, and uh, all, all of that crazy shit. That this negative shit uh, that that you hear all these fucking doom and gloomers talking about. Well, this is a, this new research uh, is talking about how people, uh, how healthy people, how healthy people can push away negative thoughts. There you go. In a recent study, scientists were able to isolate a mechanism in the human brain that seems to help healthy people shut them down. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to fucking hear it. Healthy people shut them down. It is people with psychiatric diseases like depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome where these thoughts, these, these negative doom and gloom thoughts can be intrusive and cyclical. So with this new research, scientists hope and think their new findings could one day help people suffering, suffering from being a doom and gloomer. Wow. What they need to do is study the Sancho Panza brain. The, the Sancho <laughs> Panza brain. Uh, he is incapable of a of a negative thought. Uh, this little guy is uh, the the most undepressed uh, little creature on the planet. So uh, I think the, the the scientists need to hook up Sancho Panza's brain to uh, figure out how to push those pesky doom and gloomer thoughts out of your unhealthy brain. And uh, anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read the headlines of the climate change meltdown roundup rants to prime the pump for tomorrow's climate change meltdown roundup rant, which I will dive into all of these stories and about a dozen more tomorrow. The no shit Sherlock story of the week. There is a huge gap between the Paris climate change goals and reality. <laughs> Thank you. That's Vox Magazine spelling that out. Gee, no shit, Sherlock. 2017 is set to be among the top three hottest years. I predicted back on January 1st that 2017 will end up being the second hottest year. It's either going to be the first, second, or third hottest. And uh, I'm definitely going to be talking about this story tomorrow, many versions of this story about this new federal government report coming out in the Trump administration saying humans to blame for climate change. Government report says. That is, this is live science's version. And finally, we will be talking about tomorrow. New maps show how Greenland's 
ice sheet is melting from the bottom up as well as from the top down and the sides in and the front back and the back front. Anyway, guys, just a few of the ways that uh, this planet is, is heading directly into, we're just, you know, we're just so fucked, people. Uh, we are so fucked that maybe artificial intelligence and bacteria and EMP attacks can all uh, join forces to uh, destroy human civilization and give this planet a, a fighting chance before the Earth uh, is rendered a ball of fire uh, in 600 years. What do you think of the Earth being a ball of fire in 600 years? You say, well, as long as there's a squirrely out there, there's, where's that squirrely? Is there a squirrely? Where's the squirrely? Is there a squirrely in this house? What do you think? Is there a squirrely or not? You know there's not a squirrely in this house. The squirrelies are in bed. I will be back tomorrow with my climate change meltdown roundup rant. For this one, smoke them if you got them. Bye guys.